Hi, everybody. Hey. Welcome to Get Your Chocolate On. Yes, we've been gone for a little bit, but... So long. <laughs> she has been I so busy. a little bit. <laughs> but we're back. And yes. we're so glad to be back. We're in so our hoop, hoop, hoops. Hoops are a life hack. If you don't have hoops, go buy some hoops. I know. <laughs> you don't have to wear makeup if you buy hoops. It's so true. Yeah, yeah you know. Makeup. Look at you. You're kind of going bare today. Thank I like you. it. The Alicia Keys look over there. <laughs> Alicia Keys. I know. Because well, she, you know, she, she made a declaration. She's not doing makeup. We love Don't be today. making her up. Okay. Okay. So tonight's... Uh, Today's Get Your Chocolate On. I was telling Makeda that uh, there is an article in our local newspaper called Anti-Racist Reads. So I was thinking, you know, we could um, look at some of these, but also really talk about what we recommend that people read or if they're movies that we recommend that people watch. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear from you. Hey, Amanda. So if you could put in the comments um, recommendations for anti-racist reads, or racial justice reads and watches. We would love to hear that. Okay, so in this uh, article in our local town, which is Lancaster, PA, um, seven one seven. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, hey, Kenny. Oh, that's our cousin. That's cousin Kenny. <laughs> I'm from DC. <laughs> oh my goodness! Welcome. So um, Lee Hinton, who's a local black poet, very, 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 like a senior, you know, elder writer in the, in the community here in Lancaster, he recommended The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin, The New Black by Evie Shockley, which I don't know, and Collected Poems of Lucille Clifton, and um, Citizen, an American Lyric by Claudia Rankine. So... That, that was his list. I made my own suggestions, too. But I don't know. So have you read any of these classic books? Have you read The Invisible Man, Makeda? No, wait. I've heard about it, though. That's yeah. right. Um, someone goes down to the South. And... Yeah, no, that would be probably Black Like Me or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, never mind. That's yeah. Something. Or, uh, you know, Art Biography of an Ex-Colored Man. Um, yeah, that one's Yeah. Really so, yeah. Okay, well... You're not giving yourself enough credit because her name is right True. there in the paper and okay. she's got her own little list going on. Okay, they did ask me my suggestion. <laughs> so, I, uh, what did I suggest? You suggested a lot of fiction, which is cool. I love fiction and I think imagination is revolutionary. Oh my gosh. You heard it here. I was just listening to a talk this morning where they were saying that the only way to break the limits is to use your imagination. And it's as corny true. as it sounds. No, but it's, it's true. It's a cliche for a reason. It's well, a yeah, imagination. Wow. Because have you heard of that saying? Maybe you all have. So, okay, when you have an elephant and you want to break the elephant in, what you do is get the elephant when it's a baby and put a really thick rope around it. And uh, it, it learns that it can't really move away. The rope catches it. And then by the time the elephant is an adult and actually could move any effing shit it wants to, ooh, I'm very cursing today, uh, then it doesn't, it do doesn't it. think it can mm -hmm. because it's been trained to think that it can't, that it's yep. not possible, it's not realistic, it's yep. too pie in the sky. Yep, you know, Albert Einstein, he talks a lot about how imagination is the language of all truth, um, of all truth seekers, people who mm. actually want to know the truth because if you stick to what you know, that's not all that's out there. What you think wow. So, yeah, I know, right? Ooh. I, I kind of want to talk a little more about imagination. I know we should get to those books. Because, you know what, suppose, into it. We well, because, it. you know, suppose anti racism is about reclaiming your imagination, like not accepting the status quo as your starting point. Mm. You know, really, we assume we have to start with what is, but suppose we start with what we want and work our way backward from there. I've been hearing a lot of thoughts like that from people of color recently, actually, about when you know you're, say you're in a um, working environment and you're the only black person there and you feel that pressure on you. But instead of thinking about it, pulling it to the front all the time, saying, is this happening because I'm black? Is that happening because I'm black? And it's almost, in a sense, you're like self-alienating. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing that, putting yourself forward, pulling that personality into it and just saying, mm -hmm. like, your, the skin is the base. Now, what can you do with it? Mm. And how can you either prove others wrong and force others' ideas of you? Mm. Just don't let the skin psych you out. 
keep doing you. Yeah. And that's what's always been useful for me is, wow, I'm black, but I'm me. Like, you just yes. know the bare minimum. Wow, don't let the skin psych you out. I really feel that. Like, uh, in terms of anti-racism, I feel like that's for us. Don't let, don't let the skin psych you out. Don't let it tell you what you can't do. Exactly. Right? Or you can't do chess, or you can't play golf where you can't exactly you know and i think a lot of us have learned so much about the system that we're very wary to try because mm. it's just you know it's there you don't want to seem ignorant to the fact that it exists mm. but there's ways where you can work and maneuver within the system while so you're thinking above it you're thinking outside of it mm. and i think that's how you really move forward mm. i think that's what you did honestly wow Wow, I, I got distracted because Mary Kennedy said hi, Makeda. Hi, Mary. <laughs> I feel like this sometimes it's like people come and say hi to Makeda on here who haven't seen her since she was like <laughs> 11 or a kindergartner. So it's always nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And Amanda says waking up white was a good one with queries at the end in terms of anti-racism reads. I'm glad that was good for you, uh, Mary, uh, <clears throat> Amanda. So, you know that thing, Makita, what you're saying about, like, how do you not get trapped by the, the skin? I, I forget exactly how you phrase it. I'm going to go back and listen to this because that was really good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because we want to liberate ourselves, right? I, I, I just, sometimes I feel like we get into the position of what do we need to tell white people? And I really <laughs> feel like, no, 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 no. What do we need to tell ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, um, how are we keeping ourselves stuck? You know what I'm saying? And so what you were saying is like, if you're constantly in the frame of, is this because I'm black? Is that because I'm black? And, you know, and you said that increases your alienation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, so our self-talk is really important. You know, our, what do we say to ourselves? And I remember when we were talking uh, after the killing of George Floyd, and I don't know, there was kind of this white backlash with, um, white fascists doing stuff. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. And I know, um, I feel like, you know, you said something and I was like, wow, but, you know, Makeda, you know, <laughs> it was something like really expecting all white people to be out to get us. Yeah. Did I say that? <laughs> it, was like, it was something like that. Uh, remember? And I was like, honey, really? You can't walk around with that because, number one, you're actually – co-creating it then mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. with what you're putting out there oh I'm a worst case scenario thinker and I've mm -hmm. I've been catching myself on that recently a mm -hmm. lot I'm mm -hmm. sure if you go back and listen to me a few episodes ago and listen to me now you'll see some of my opinions have changed like first of all my mom was teaching me to start a lot of things with I don't know much about this topic but <laughs> and then proceed into it because a lot of the things I say are just from my short 18 years of being here. Yeah. And I haven't experienced this whole ton. I mean, yeah. it's like it's there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's a good point. That's a good point. Because a lot of us, I mean, not you're 18, but not just because you're 18. I mean, look at me. I'm like a lot older than that. And there, there's so much I do not know about. And what if I just said, well, you know, I actually haven't done any research on this. <laughs> I haven't read much about it. But here's my opinion. You know what I mean? It then it, it sort of like it kind of ratches it down a exactly. little bit. Exactly, it makes it lose merit, but yeah, but it, it also kind of takes down some of the righteousness out of it. Exactly, which you know. and that opens it up for conversation a little more. Yeah, and that's why when me and you, you always say like, "Well, Makeda, how much do you know about that?" If we're about to get into an argument about it, and then I can say, "Actually, I don't know why I'm standing so hard on this ground." <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, yeah. But, you know, but getting back to imagination, and I know maybe maybe you're tired of talking about imagination. No. You're okay with that? I like imagination. Okay, good. Because I'm thinking, like, about, um, you know, I don't know. What's the, like, when you, I know you listen to a lot of music. I'm wondering what, like, feeds your imagination or how do you, what would you like, oh, you know, man. to be doing with, imaginations i'm just saying you know i'm starting yeah. to think about that because i have a sabbatical coming up mm -hmm. i'm taking a month-long sabbatical yeah and one of the things i i'm not calling it a vacation because i actually want to consciously feed myself rest res respite 
you know, I don't know. You know what I'm okay, talking about. I do. Yeah. And in terms of my imagination, yeah. recently, um, this is, I don't know why, well, why I'm going this way, but, but quant- take it. quantum physics has really been taking over my imagination. Ooh. And this might be a little woo-woo for some people. But go go I for like it. To, I go know, right? I I'm like ready. to use my tarot cards and things like that. That feeds my imagination in ways that it hasn't been fed in years. It's sort of like when you're younger. I, I just have the biggest imagination. I'll play by myself, play with my friends. Just You think and you're there. You're transported. If you can agree on that reality, then you're there. No one can tell you're not there. And that's sort of where it was at. And now when I'm doing, I was learning about um, quantum entanglement and just the idea that a particle could be, uh, wait, yeah, an electron, no, an electron could be a wavelength and a particle at once. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're And saying. it could just be two things at once, and the observer determines what it becomes. And so, and then I was applying that to my tarot cards, thinking, like, so at this point, if that's true, then each one of these cards could be any single, it could be any of the 52. Mm-hmm. And when you pull it out, I determine which one it becomes. And that's sort of how it all works. And I, just things like that, it feeds my imagination and it brings it into the physical world all at once. I don't wow. know if that makes sense. Yeah. But that's what it does for me and that's what sort of keeps me going. Yeah. <laughs> keeps well, my... well, kind of what I hear and what you're saying is, um, you know, by owning your imagination or the fact that your perception is determining reality. Yeah. Right. You are taking some power. This time you're, you're taking some power into what you're creating. Exactly. You're taking, you're owning that you actually have power. And, and I think that if we think about, because we started talking about anti-racism reads, what we want to, what we want to fill ourselves with, I think is reminding us that we have power. Yes. Even if we don't have institutional power yes. or we don't own the White House or we don't own Facebook or whatever. Okay. That is all true. Mm-hmm. And that is significant power. It is. And there is the power that we have um, as imaginative, creative beings. So, you know, I, I just think that's valuable and worth it. So let's see. We have here Missy Jeans is saying, yes, reclaim the imagination. And Mary Kennedy says, you're so poised. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Amanda says that her quilting mentor asked her, what element in, is in your quilt so that people will know it's your work when they see it, even before they know you made it? Mmm. 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 Oh, my gosh. Speaking of quilts and imagination. Hey, girl. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. We have to give a shout out. This quilt was actually pieced by um, my mentor and, um, you know, beloved person in my life, Sonia Ahuja, also a racial justice, you know, educator, consultant, you know, oh my gosh, I'm just playing with my hair all along today. So anyway, Sonia pieced this together for us. And um, so thank you for bringing up quilts because, you know, when people make art for you and when you make art that's part of you owning yourself and when you only consume art it's like you're you're letting a part of you starve yes it's like it's not activated it's like you have the dna for it but you're not activating your dna and one of the things about imagination um McKay, this kind of gets to what you were saying. It has to do with like using your imagination to promote your own healing. Mm-hmm. You know, because when you're traumatized or hurt, th- that feeling of being stuck is so real. Yes, it you you, really does require imagination to picture you beyond that hurt or beyond that trauma. Yeah, you have to think outside the box. Yes. Yeah. And I'm thinking about like I was doing this um, self love workshop. One of the things they had us do was imagine, you know, seeing the color green in our heart center. Imagine seeing the color orange down below the belly. Mm-hmm. And and then watch your breath. You can't watch your breath. But imagine you can watch your breath as you breathe in and watch your breath as you breathe out. It's like we, it's asking us to use our imaginations, you know, in the service of our health and our healing. Mm-hmm. Because they say that. 
we're a mind body. We're not just a mind or body. We're a mind body. So if, if we work with our imagination, we can support our bodies. Okay, I feel like I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Well, you mentioned James Baldwin. Yes, I here. did. And I don't know if he of, was a choice. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if any of you guys have seen his new movie on Netflix, the documentary, I'm Not Your Negro. Have yeah. You seen no, I haven't seen it yet. Did you I see it? I saw it. It was really good. Yeah. And one thing that he did that was really interesting, or whoever created that documentary, they pieced together the same interviewer interviewing MLK, interviewing Malcolm X, and interviewing James Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Um and it was just very interesting because on one hand we have Malcolm X who is sort of saying um, the way in which black people are acting is not an action itself. It's simply a reaction to what's already been forced yeah. on them. And yeah. there's not much you can, like, you should ex be expecting that. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. And then there's MLK. And then, you know, he called, Malcolm X called MLK a modern Uncle Tom. I never knew that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Yeah. I laughed a little when I heard it. Yeah. And then we have, they switch over right after that statement to MLK talking about the space of love is the most powerful space you could move from. Mm. And he got that message from God, apparently. And mm. that was, it was interesting to me because I see one person moving based off the physical realm mm. and just sort of moving with what feels correct in that realm it's on the 3d it's, level it's justice in a sense mm. it's 3d justice mm. Mm. and then on the other hand we have that ascended um opinion mm. sort of and but when i so i thought about it and i thought you know i think malcolm x has made a little more logical sense mm -hmm. but the way in which <laughs> the okay. way in which mlk was able to pull that many people together mm -hmm. shows me that moving with that language of love can mm. be more powerful. And I know this is, mm -hmm. mm. I get upset because I think I only really learned about MLK in school. So I'm also maybe a little more um, biased. Yes. His opinion. Yes. And they love like to pull that. out MLK. Mm -hmm. And that also makes me more wary of the fact that he really could just be a modern Uncle Tom. <laughs> because, you know, everybody loved it. Because you've been trained into that. Well, first of all, not first of all, but I want to know what you think. I will add. Okay. I really will add, but I want to hear about James Baldwin because you said it was a James Baldwin um, documentary, and they interviewed three people. Okay. MLK, Malcolm X, and James Baldwin. So James Baldwin was all about proving the. Um, I don't. It's not demoralization, but the lack of morals in not accepting black people as human and uh -huh. saying how can we live That's in immoral. this. Immoral. Yes, and how can we live in this. Christian society's God-fearing society, and yet you are determining the level of humanity in people and um, moving as such and saying things like, you know, segregation is keeping people uneducated and it's happening for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that lack of exposure is the cause of the continuous segregation and more white people being afraid and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so his was sort of coming out this way. Yeah. And okay was here. Yeah. And Malcolm was there. Yeah. So I just want to know, because mm -hmm. I was conflicted watching it. I was thinking if I was in that time, I know you were only a few years old. Yeah. <laughs> but if I were in that time, who would I be following? Yeah. Yeah. Who would you be following? Um, you know, at different stages in my life, I thought different things. I bet. So I, I think it depends on who you were at the time, you know, what you knew and uh, what your peers were doing. Um, there's a play called The Meeting, Again, Imagination, about an imaginary meeting between Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And in the play, they have lots of arguments about mm -hmm. the way forward for black people. And... Um, what, one of the things I felt, because I've seen the play, I actually got to work with the playwright, Jeff Setson. When I was in college, he, um, you know, he advised me on, on the play I was writing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, he, he, he gave Malcolm X all the really zinger lines, like, uh, you know, he said, so one of the things that Malcolm X said in real life and in the play was, when the game is baseball, get a bat. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right? That He's saying, like, um, violence is as American as a, as a apple pie. I remember that quote. Okay, right? <laughs> yeah. That's Malcolm X. And you have to be like, yeah. Doesn't that kind of make you want to go, yeah, don't be telling me what I cannot <laughs> do because you are doing this to me. Yeah. Right? Okay. When a man has his, his foot on your neck, you can't be telling him, oh, you should be protesting gently. 
used to say, get the F off my neck and do whatever you can to get by any means necessary. Okay. Very, as you said, very understandable. Very 3D justice. Yes. I happen to agree with you. Uh, uh, MLK was elevating it. I mean, that's the deal. He was elevating. He, he was saying that you cannot let someone else just uh, determine your strategy and your tactics. Yep. Okay. And because when you said the foot on the neck thing, yeah, my mind automatically went to the sit-ins where people were literally getting beat yeah. and not responding and right. not doing what um, Malcolm X was suggesting right. to do. And that was effective. And it's yeah. just like the pain that was necessary um, to get that justice going through. Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. Maybe now we could say it was, yeah. but I would just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I want to know what you think. The people who did those sit-ins, do they feel it's worth it for where we're at right now? Do they wish things went differently? So, I don't know. Also, talking about this makes me think there's a difference between justice and love. There's a difference. Which is better? Justice can be nice. It's satisfying. Yes, it can be. But and it's necessary. Be. Okay. Um, suppose we um, say that they are polarity. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't, if you only exhale, you'll die. If you only inhale, you'll die. You need to exhale and to inhale. Yes. Right? So that would be justice. And I think that's justice, justice and love. We need justice and we need love. If oh. we neglect love and we're only about, you know, whatever you do, I can do back to you. Um, you know, MLK said everybody's blind. You know, the planet gets burned up. We just bomb each other to smithereens, mm -hmm. right? True. Um, but if we only have love or promote love, and in the promotion of the love, we don't actually um, hold people accountable, demand that they stop doing behaviors, take away their power to do behaviors, then, um, you know, we get people also being harmed. True. So I think we need – there are polarity. What that means is you don't want to do one to the neglect of the other one because then you could die. Yeah. Both ways. Yeah. Well, when you were saying that, I when you said inhaling and exhaling, doing both, I thought that was justice. And then you needed that you, to inhale and exhale to even do anything else, which would be where love comes in mm. outside of that. Mm. I don't know. I'm glad I have you to ask these questions. Too. Well, I'm glad I have you because you know I love it. You watch these documentaries. This is awesome. Um, I guess you know we wanted to come back on because we haven't been on for a while and, and we have not mentioned Beyonce yet. So guys, so, <laughs> so we do have to talk about Beyonce. But in our next episode, stay with us because um, we're gonna. Um, we're going to pre-record that one and post it and talk about... I want us to talk about Black Parade. What's that? Ooh, you don't know Black Parade? Is it? Well, that's um, the new Beyonce uh, oh, oh, song oh, video. Oh, oh. I thought... You know what I'm talking about? Black Parade, Death at the Black Parade, something like that? No. Death Parade. It's a rock song, I think. Oh, a rock know. song. But anyways, anyway. Okay. So that one's really awesome. It gave me more uh, respect for Beyonce. You know, we... Over here, we're always going back and forth. I'm always going back and forth. I am, too. I'm not going to lie. I mean, yeah. Today, and at the end of her career right now, where we are, I am a stand. Previously, I was a stand, but for the wrong reasons. Mm. So, you know, we got a tumultuous relationship, Beyonce and me. Yeah. But I actually just did some research, too, recently. I was telling you. I listened to this podcast. It's called Dissect, and they take these albums that are, like, creative genius, and they break it down. If you don't listen to it, you should. They do, like, um, Frank Ocean's Blonde, Beyonce's Lemonade, Jay-Z's 444. Just, like, very modern albums breaking it down. And they broke down Lemonade, and the way they did it, whoo! Your mind was blown? my mind. And because I, I had watched the video, the whole movie, Lemonade, my freshman year of high, high school. school. And then coming back to this dissect four years later, I was like, wow. Because what she was, I thought it was all about her and Jay-Z. And I was in love with it then because I got to look into their relationship and just see the things that people couldn't see. Mm -hmm. But now hearing about it she's really talking about encapsulating all of black love and talking about the ways slavery has tainted that legacy of black love mm. for all of us up to now and the curses that so many black women and men face mm. and bringing the curses to the light so that we can transmute them transform them mm. and heal 
Mm. So I'm gonna get into it with you guys because oh. I love it. Not awesome. now, but not now, but yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do some Beyonce for our next I'm sorry, episode. Sorry, guys. Oh no, no, no! I don't think she, we haven't been on for a while. Okay, and um, I know, but you know, she's one of those seminal figures that we just gotta come touch back. And she also does not stay quiet. I mean, she's I always producing say, something. She doesn't let her persona die at all. No, you know? she does keep herself out there, she or does. her machine keeps her out there. Okay, Makeda. Yeah. Um, I have to, Catherine Walt Winter is saying, that is so true, imagination's key in recovery. Sue Camlin just joined. Um, I, oh, I wanted to ask you something. Oh, my God. I'm what was sorry. it about? I took the mic away with the Beyonce comment. Oh, no, no, no. What was it about? Oh, well. So you all will have to join us next week. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to come on? We usually try to come on at noon on Fridays. So uh, we're going to pre-record. And why don't you just join our watch party um, on Friday? Are you working on Friday at noon? Yeah. Oh, man. You work, <laughs> this girl worked so many hours at her job. This woman I'm made so me get a job, bro. I was not trying to do all that. But, but I'm so proud of yeah, her yeah. because, you know, when you have a certain age, you know, you got to be, um, you got to be carrying your load. You got to be carrying your weight, right? I, well, yeah, and it's fine because. If you can, and, you know, I can. can. And this job has taught me a lot about what I don't want. <laughs> that, I mean, and it's been so helpful because knowing me, I definitely could have said, yeah, I can handle a nine to five. What do you mean? Yeah. But now I know what I need and what I need is some flexibility. <laughs> Woo! Okay. I know what I need and what I need is flexibility. All right, y'all. That was, this is Get Your Chocolate On. I'm Dr. Amanda. I'm Dr. Makeda. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Peace to you. Peace and love. Thank you for coming on.